Hello and welcome to TECM 5200. I'm Kim Saito Campbell. Most of my students call me Dr. Kim. Nice to meet you. I look forward to learning more about you in the course. We start with a definition here or a description. This is what the catalog says about this particular course. Advanced study of content strategy skills important for technical communicators. Students learn about how technical communicators use content strategies to develop web content. So the way I teach the course, you're going to learn more than simply content development. That's because professionals today would define content strategy as more than simply content development. While Tech com professionals typically start their careers in content development jobs. Content strategists really have to be able to manage content within an organization. And so we're going to talk a good bit about management and about the role of content in business. So you're going to learn about managing and optimizing the value of content. All right, to help you understand how the course is going to work, um, I want to do three things in this video lecture. I'll start by presenting course objectives, very important, so you know what you're supposed to get. Second, I'll briefly describe uh, the major course assignments and a little bit of my philosophy about teaching because it tells you something about learning and about the standards I'll use for evaluating you. And then finally, I'll help you get to know just a little bit about me. Let's go. Let's start with the goals of the course, all of which are designed to support you with understanding of content strategy needed by professional technical communicators. The first objective is for you to focus on content as a business asset and present content strategy development as a means of increasing business value. Much of the material in Module 2 teaches you how to think about content in this way. The second objective is for you to gather and organize data about content performance. That data will be both descriptive and evaluative, as well as both quantitative and qualitative. It'll come from interviews of stakeholders, review of existing artifacts like customer personas, customer journey maps, etc., and use of software tools like Excel, Google Analytics, You'll begin that work in Module 2. The third objective is for you to achieve strategic insights from analyzing data collected about content performance. The fourth objective is for you to apply project management tools or techniques like charters, work breakdown structures, Kanban, Trello, status updates, peer review, all of those during a team content strategy project. You'll be assigned to a team before module two begins. Objective five is for you to reflect on content strategy knowledge and skill development through written blog posts in a content management system or CMS, like WordPress. This actually begins right away in module one. The sixth and final objective is for you to demonstrate professionalism. You're going to do that through timely submission of deliverables, constructive interpersonal interactions, upholding your commitments to your teammates, to me. In order to achieve these six objectives and complete the course requires that you move through eight week-long modules of content and activities. Now, let's talk about the course assignments in just a little detail. Before I list the specific assignments, I want to make sure you understand the workload in this course, and especially how best to manage it. I hope you learned what to expect in an eight-week grad course when you were admitted into one of our programs, but I want to remind you. So you earn three credit hours for completing this course in eight weeks. Here's some background you may not know. In the U.S., universities that receive federal funds for any reason use this definition of credit hour. 
one hour of classroom or direct faculty instruction, and a minimum of two hours of out of class student work each week for approximately 15 weeks. What that means is a three credit hour course has to include at least three hours of instruction plus six hours of out of class work for 15 weeks. That is a total of 135 hours. If we divide those hours over eight weeks instead of 15, we get 16.875 hours per week. The good news is in TECM 5200, I've assumed your workload every week is a minimum of 10 hours. I've actually carefully considered how you should allocate those 10 hours to perform best in the course. You'll find that information in every module in Canvas in the Start Here module overview. When you view the overview, you'll see a date and time by which I recommend you view this overview information. Obviously, earlier is better. There's a brief description of the main topic for that module. That's followed by a list of learning objectives that are specific to that module. And finally, because the course proceeds through one module for each of eight weeks, there's a weekly to-do list. This will include every activity you should be engaged in, not only those for which you earn a grade. For TECM 5200, the to-dos are divided into midweek. That means from Sunday at midnight until Wednesday at midnight. And then end of week, which means from Wednesday at midnight to Sunday at midnight. Each to-do is connected to the module's learning objectives and ends with a recommended time allocation. For example, I recommend students spend two hours on the instructional materials before Wednesday at midnight in Module 1. If you are spending far more time on an activity than I've indicated in the overview, please contact me. I want to help you figure out why or where you're losing productivity. You should expect to spend 10, but not 20 hours per week on the course. Let me reiterate something you hear, I assume, in all your TechCom courses. That's that teamwork is an essential skill. You'll also learn in this course there's no way to do content strategy without working with many other individuals. So you are going to complete a team project over the first five or so weeks in TECM 5200. However, I've weighted the assignments you do individually most heavily for your grade because you earn an individual grade in the course. Of the 100 possible points you can earn in the course, 70 come from individual assignments, 30 come from team assignments. This table summarizes the team assignments you'll complete along with the learning objectives they support and the way in which each of them contributes toward, in this case, the 30 points. 30% of your final course grade. Your team's primary deliverable or assignment is a content assessment. That's worth 20 points. During the project, you'll submit a few other deliverables, a WBS or Kanban board, a status update, uh, and a team charter. You'll find details about every assignment on Canvas, including the criteria by which your performance is evaluated by me. In addition, at the beginning of each module on Canvas, you'll find guidance from me in the module overview where I'll tell you how best to allocate your time when completing the assignments for that module or week. The table on this slide summarizes assignments you complete for individual grades in the course, along again with learning objectives they support and the way in which they contribute toward the 70 points or 70% of your course grade. The major assignment builds off of your team project and requires that you develop a report for your instructor about your client. The other major assignment requires that you publish six blog posts based on what you're learning in the course on your own website, probably using WordPress. Together, obviously, these two assignments make up 50% or 50 possible points out of 100 in the course. The other individual assignments include several things, including the category of professionalism, which I calculate based on multiple pieces of evidence. You'll also complete a status update while working on your individual report. And during the team project, you will individually review two other teams' draft assessments. 
As I said, details about all these assignments are found on Canvas. I hope you'll find the Gantt chart I'm showing you here um, helpful in thinking about your workload during the course. I sent that to you via email before the course began, and you'll also find it on the syllabus page. Because I believe you may better understand the goal of assignments that I give in the course and my standards for judging your performance, I want to take a few minutes now to explain a little about my teaching philosophy. If you've taken other courses from me, you may find the rest of this lecture repetitive. The foundation of my philosophy comes from work done by a researcher named David Kolb, who studied how adults learn at work. What he found is captured in something called Kolb's experiential learning cycle. The fundamental insight here is that learning happens through multiple cycles. It never occurs in a straight uphill climb. Many people believe that you have to choose between either experience or theory when you want to gain knowledge or skills, but that choice represents a false dichotomy. Let me help you understand what I'm talking about with an example. Let's say you're a swimmer. You want to compete in the 100 meter butterfly. You enter an event have the experience of competing, you place fifth. If you quit now, or you just keep entering more races, you won't really learn much. You've got to continue to the next phase of the learning cycle. After your experience, you have to think back on the race. What exactly happened? Reflecting on your experience is necessary if you're committed to learning. But if you get stuck in reflection, you're not going to learn that much either. You've got to advance to the next learning phase. Talk to your coach, who theorizes that your lost time at the start and your turn technique slowed you down during the race. He explains why and how you might change your technique. But the coach's idea is only theory unless you advance to the experimentation phase. You get in the pool, try out some new turn techniques, do some drills for getting off the block more quickly. In other words, you get some practice. But if you stop with experimentation, you still won't know what you've actually learned. Instead, you have to start over with the first phase again. You compete in another race, have a new experience, and you might win. Or not. If you're serious about learning, you'll keep repeating the cycle by reflecting on most recent experience, theorizing about why things happened the way they did, trying out new techniques, over and over and over again. What does all this mean for a student in TECM 5200? Well, first, the assignments I've planned will require you to move back and forth between thinking and doing. You're probably more comfortable with one than the other, but the quality of both of them matter for learning. Second, I believe learning is a cyclical process, not an outcome. If you focus only on grades, that's an outcome, you're going to be frustrated and you won't learn that much. Third, I expect you to take risks. Risks make you uncomfortable. Sometimes you'll fall down. Failure is actually necessary for learning. I'll do all I can to make it safe for you to fail on some tasks without failing the course. Finally, it's an advantage to have a coach to guide you through the learning process. That's partly my job. I'll give you as much individual coaching as I can, but of course there are limits on what any one individual can offer, so I ask you to coach each other. Honestly, that should lead to deeper knowledge for both the person doing the coaching and the person getting the coaching. Let me close this introductory lecture by helping you get to know just a little bit about me. I assume you know that I am at UNT. I joined the department in 2016 as a professor and actually as chair of the department. In 2020, I stepped aside as chair of the department and took on the role of director of corporate relations. In that role, part of my job is to supervise internships, what we call practicum experiences for our MA students. One of the reasons I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn is that that's where I post job or internship opportunities, and I post a lot of them. More than 250 in the last four months of 2020. That's during the pandemic. If you prepare yourself with the knowledge and skills taught in our TechCom courses at UNT, you'll be qualified for many of those openings. Enough. Here's a brief professional history leading up to 
2016. My passion for language eventually led me to graduate school to uh, study linguistics and tech writing. While I was in school in the late 1980s, I worked as a technical editor. I earned my PhD from LSU in 1990 after completing my dissertation research on uh, applications of linguistics to professional writing. My first job as a professor was in the English department at Auburn University. In 1992, I began work as a professor and researcher at the Air Force's postgraduate school. In 1997, I joined the business school at the University of Alabama, where I stayed for 19 years. During that time, I served as the editor of an IEEE research journal for over 10 years. And while at Bama, I also held some other administrative jobs. So now you know about the goals of the course, the major assignments, the philosophy behind them, and also a little about me. Let's get going. Mm -hmm.